welcome Dom to our interview about how your school has used the Wellbeing Ambassadors program. So can we can you introduce yourself and tell the audience how long you've been working on the Wellbeing Ambassadors program? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, um, I'm Dom. I work at Dame Alice Owen School in Hertfordshire, uh, music teacher, but also I'm leading this project, this Wellbeing Ambassadors project, um, which in our school we're calling peer mentoring, but Wellbeing Ambassadors. We've been using this material. I found it just just under a year ago via one of the webinars. So we kind of um, got the uh, Train the Trainer Wellbeing Ambassadors program we got their kind of resource just about just under a year ago so yeah what what made you choose well-being ambassadors from worth it well the, so there's several things we knew we were looking for a sort of a train the trainer type program we knew that kind of we wanted to have that flexibility to deliver kind of times that suited us and when the pupils were around and things like that so we were looking for train the trainer um the webinar which i watched i just I really like the emphasis. I really, I just liked all the content and the kind of research-based content, but made really accessible to me. <laughs> the fact that there's a train the trainer program. And then when we looked at the resources, just like how much I just felt like the students are going to respond brilliantly to this. It's going to be such um, a brilliant kind of day and way to get them thinking about well-being, their own well-being, uh, enabling um, kind of positive well-being in others as well um, so lots of things like that and also the other thing is we had started with a slightly different focus when I started the peer mentoring pre-covid <laughs> um, and I was actually having done that and had a bit of time to think um, I was thinking rather than going for organizational and maybe a focus slightly on homework and academic and organizing I was like but what we're really doing what we really want to do is well-being and is mental health and is pastoral and I thought we were kind of eking ground to that a different way. And I thought, no, 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 we're just going to go straight in with that unashamedly, really visibly. We're about positive well-being um, and mental health, positive mental health. Um, uh, I feel like it would really suit <laughs> everybody. Like, you know, it, it's and there's flexibility there as well. So you can make it suit you. You can work within that to kind of create the day and the training and the emphasis that your school kind of is most relevant to your school and where you're at in the process um, so it's a really brilliant mix of things so there's some very kind of um active tasks lots of smiles lots of laughs um you know really working together communicating you know some really practical tasks and activities which they in a whole day they, you know really was brilliant because it meant they were moving around they were interacting with different people they had a chance to be kind of practical um but then there's just these brilliant uh kind of um questions and ideas and things to think about um that really got them thinking and reflecting and rethinking and questioning um <laughs> and contributing so a really good mixture of practical um but with a point like there's always you know that's to illustrate something um, and also those, we had some really quiet moments of kind of reflection um, and things, you know, not even necessarily to share, but just for them to think about themselves um, and a, a kind of a response from our pupils. We had like overwhelmingly amazing positive response to these materials and to the day, but um, they said it was really great to have in-depth discussions and time to discuss things maybe that they wouldn't necessarily have talked about before um, with their peers or one of them even said things that, um, sometimes we avoid talking about or kind of brush under the carpet a little bit. Um, uh, so, you know, it gave them a real space and an opportunity to um, kind of discuss some of those things that they hadn't before. And I think the practical activities and the smiles and the laughs helped them to do that also. And right at the beginning, you kind of set your, ex uh, not really the expectations, it's kind of more like contracting, I guess, about how this is going to run and the safeguarding aspects of what you're doing as well. So it, I felt really supported in that, that, um, even though we're going to be looking at well-being and positive coping strategies and things like that and positive communication and relationship building, it was really great that we had that safeguarding element as well and that start right at the start of the day working around how we want to be in the room and, and where this goes and when to contribute and when not to and keeping yourself safe and all those things. So really well supported in all that aspect, which I think can certainly an aspect that I felt like that would be good to get the support um, because it's not you know something I've got huge experience of beyond the teaching world um, and then brilliant activities and tasks and brilliant questions and things to think about that really I mean the discussion was so rich what came out and you know the ideas yeah so that that's basically the coaching nature of the intervention design because well-being ambassadors is a team coaching program where you're getting a team of young people to be your ambassadors and 
coaching them through a range of practical activities that we know works for them. And that's the magic that you've just described. Um, and to, also just to say that you actually did deliver that workshop three times, didn't you, in, the, in yes. your first year with how many young people did you train up in Ooh. the end? We've actually got 71 wow. uh, now, which is incredible. We had a huge response. The first one we did in the summer term, so when year 11 had um, kind of finished their assessment period, it wasn't quite the GCSEs as we know it. Um, so we picked up one in July, one, one full cohort then, and then we did two in September as well for people who were coming into our sixth form because it was year 12 that we were focusing the training for, so coming out of year 11 into year 12. So people who were joining us, our school in the sixth form, and also some that hadn't been around for the summer one, so had the chance. So three days, three very different experiences, three very different set of outcomes and discussions. That was really interesting to have that contrast, but all very, very, very um, kind of informative. So just to explain that Wellbeing Ambassadors is, like Dom said, a train the trainer toolkit. You get access to our online platform. You get access to the materials to deliver a workshop day with your students. You can deliver it as a programme. But you've said to us before that you feel that the fact it's a day makes it almost like more immersive for yeah. the students certainly when I thought about it and we were sort of it was like no uniform and we had our own space and you know we made it quite kind of uh, special that way I did think we grew as that day went on um, I think some pupils got more confident um, and I just think if we'd have stopped after an hour or two and then started again the next week for that block I know the materials would have been the same for us uh, for you know for kind of on my reflection, so particular to us, I just felt like having that length of time, having the kind of five, I think we had five and a half hours with a lunch break where they could wander and chat, you know, with those kind of breaks fitted in as well. I think that really helped with the overall arc of what we were doing in terms of focusing on our own kind of recognizing well-being in ourselves and then moving the focus a little more to how we could, you know, empower and en enable others to recognize their well-being and strategies. Um, it worked beautifully for us taking the whole day and we gave it a little more time. Because I think one of the prob one of the worries people have is fitting it in and taking mm -hmm. the, the young people out of lessons to do this kind of work. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. well, we'll talk about the impact in a minute, but for you as a school, it's been totally worth that time and financial investment, hasn't it? without a doubt and I've been like super super unbelievably well supported by SLT and making those things happen you know yeah. they've seen that they've seen it working and they've seen the value totally and it's part of the kind of the kind of one of the big like whole school priorities so um yeah certainly kind of having SLT and the pastoral department being so supportive has helped with those logistics because it is tricky and learning time is important so there's kind of a balance to be found yeah. there so it makes sense. Let's talk about the impact then. So what did, so you've trained up your 70 young people. You've been rolling out a peer mentoring program for year 12 to work with the younger students. What's, yep. been, what's been the impact? How has it affected your school? Oh, it's been, uh, it's been huge actually, which is, you know, I have to say credit to the mentors who've done an incredible job. We decided as um, school that we would focus on the transition process so look at year seven coming in mainly we have helped some students and work with students in kind of year eight and nine as well a little bit more kind of bespoke but the universal kind of offer was there for the uh, year seven coming in because um, covid being what it was meant they hadn't been into school they hadn't been in the building they hadn't met their forms you know in real life just on the screen um, so it's a moment anyway that uh, is, you know is a possibility for people to come a little unstuck or feel a little unsure but just felt like that might be slightly magnified this time round. so um the head of year seven had a google form a couple of weeks in saying kind of you know how you're feeling how you're settling in and from that we generated um some names and from the head of year seven um she gave me uh, quite a lot of names as well so i think we had at that point i've just got to check 59 year sevens who were on our list who in that first term um, the mentors worked with one-to-one -one. Um, during form time on a Friday. They walk and talk outside, which is really cool. That was a COVID thing, but actually it's a brilliant thing. And um, we talked about like when you're walking or when you're doing something else, sometimes the conversation is a little easier. So some do sit and chat, but mainly they're all outside and they're kind of having a walk around. They drop into the form room, pick up their um, mentee and they go for a walk. So that's kind of a, like a 15 minute session really every week. Um, we looked at kind of around about a six week period. We went a little bit longer um, with those first few. Minute walk and talk slot. Yeah. That's, and I think just thinking about the logistics, like to fit that in the timetable, that 15 minutes is like a gift for that younger young, young person, isn't it? Yeah. But it's, it's not a difficult amount of time to fit in either. 
no and we wondered is it not enough or but actually the mentors are saying no they do get a really decent conversation and yeah like you say just 15 minutes just for them to chat you know just all about them um and it's that regular so on a friday they'll be there same time same place um kind of same process um, and, you know, we looked at some kind of conversation starters and things like that. So some some have used those ideas and some have just been off and away and kind of chatting away. So um, it has worked. It's um, so I'm not in on a Friday, which is really annoying. <laughs> but my <laughs> colleagues tell me it looks amazing to see all these like um, people out there walking around. And we've got a big site as well, which really helps. But it did fit in really nicely with the tutoring, um, you know, with the form tutor time. And that's another thing. That's another whole school thing to work out is kind of when it can happen. And it just means that everyone's doing it at the same time, pretty much. I mean, every now and again, we tweak it slightly. Um, and that that's kind of agreed with the form tutors, with the heads of year, with SLT, that that's kind of an OK thing for them to be doing at that point and that that's going to work within the school day. Um, so it works really well for us. And I think morning is quite good as well because yeah. then it's a little fresher. And there might even be something around attendance there. I did have one who said, oh, it's my peer mentor day, so I always make sure I'm on time then. And I thought, oh, well, you never know. Those sorts of, you know, there's an impact there, isn't there? So there's an impact in terms of numbers, but... Um, I think also, you know, obviously in other ways as well, kind of um, kind of more qualitative um, and the impact kind of we see in term two as well of like how term one went as well. Um, we did as well as the one to one walk and talk. We've got a drop in room on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at lunchtime. Um, so for year seven, there's always a couple of peer mentors in there. They're in a rotor um, and they drop in if they want to. So it's a real kind of just a space for them to do what they like, to be quiet or to chat or, you know, at their space, really um with the mentors kind of around too so we we've, we've done that and when the mentors went into form time and did some played some games with them in form time we saw that our lunchtime drop in kind of the numbers went up a little bit there's not loads in there kind of between eight and 12 and some days none so it's not like a huge thing but i think for those individuals it's a real place of safety of quiet one of them said you know there's no drama there's no stress i love it here it's just you know it's mm -hmm lunch times and breaks are quite hard to navigate sometimes aren't they and we have a long lunch we've um stopped that now because they've got other spaces they can go and we just saw the numbers decreasing which was great because it meant we'd probably done the job yeah. <laughs> um so that's kind of slightly yeah. more temporary but the one-to-one -one, yeah worked really nicely in that first term and i did check with all the um year seven pupils that i i kind of met up with them all explain what the, what was going on explain what the process is totally voluntary nobody had to do it if they didn't want to one boy said that he was a little reluctant wasn't so sure he'd do one session see how he went um and then he kept going for all his sessions and then when we'd gone at some feedback in the second term he was like yeah i'd like to keep going i'd like a mentor for the whole year <laughs> so you know like you can see when there's kind of uh, individual cases as it were um and one of them said oh i'm really enjoying this can my friend do it as well so you know it's that sort of there's some impact there of individuals and um but also the whole cohort i think because in term two, um, I popped into assembly with the peer mentors, a couple of my year 12 peer mentors, and they chatted about what they'd been doing and kind of um, kind of the system. Um, and then there was a Google form for all of year seven to fill in and the tutors enabled us to do that during form time. So that's amazing. Um, and it basically said, if you've had a mentor, you know, how did it go? And we got some brilliant feedback from that. And then if you haven't yet had the opportunity to do one to one walk and talk, would you like to? Yes, please. No, thank you. Uh, and 65 of the year sevens ticked. Yes, please. Now, that's in addition to 59 who already had. So um, that was incredible. <laughs> Um, and when we talk about um, right at the beginning, kind of the, the things we wanted to emphasize in the program, the things year 12 wanted to emphasize that what they designed um, was a real visibility around the peer mentoring um, to reduce barriers in our kind of brick wall building exercise, uh, to reduce stigma about, you know, anything that touches on kind of well-being and mental health and pastoral, to really try and be like, it's who we are, it's what we do. You come to this school, you have the opportunity to have a peer mentor, um, to do the walk and talk or... Um, and they were really keen that this was quite visible. We did acknowledge for some people that might be a bit tricky. So we're also going to do the subtle and quietly too. But for me, that 65 people ticking the yes box means that we got or we're getting <laughs> the visibility and the reduction of kind of barriers and stigma. Like we're doing OK with that. And I think because people had seen their friends coming and going and people have been saying, oh, yeah, and saying hi to their mentors around school. And there was this real kind of buzz. Um, I think that's where the 65 perhaps came from. I think if I'd have gone in in term one, explained it and then said, who wants in? I'm not, I mean, we might have done, who knows, but I'm not sure we'd have got the same response. Um, yeah, it's the impact 
I mean, it's huge. This is real buzz. And, you know, it's down to my mentors. They're doing such a brilliant job. And some of them are mentoring two people and some of them are continuing with their mentee that they had kind of before and adding someone else on. So is this real badge? Oh, and we've got badges. That's part of our visibility as well. We've all got peer mentoring badge that we wear with pride. So, um, yeah, it's the impact there, an impact against what we wanted to achieve in terms of transition into the school, in terms of visibility, in terms of reduction of stigma and barriers and also in terms of this idea of like preventing things so not just waiting until people are struggling and then sending a peer mentor in and we do do a little bit of that particularly with like the year 13s who were my original original mentors they've they kind of picked up quite a lot of that um but just this kind of universal offer um is just part of the systems of the school it's part of what we do it is who we are that we are hoping as well as all the other things that it will kind of be part of that preventative strategy before things kind of get to the point where there needs to be a, a more kind of targeted intervention which will happen as well obviously with some people but I'm um, just kind of part of the ethos part of the culture part of being year seven at Owens you know that we are working towards positive well-being positive mental health having conversations talking um, and preventing some of that kind of isolation and loneliness and worry um, that can lead elsewhere then so we're hoping we're hoping we're doing all right with that too hard to measure because it hasn't happened it reaches everybody so the year 12s got an awful lot out of this as well which was something that I hadn't thought about quite so much like the training day when we came out of that um I asked for some feedback and and one comment from that was I've, I've learned I'm not alone um from the training which absolutely like floored me and that's the name of our program so um it's i am not alone the mentors i think um this has been a real um learning for them as well and they've got an awful lot out of this and there's just you know they pop in to see me and they chat amongst themselves and i just think that idea of of um talking and conversation and connecting um you know and i know over the last couple of years connection has been tricky just across the board for so in so many ways but when you can't mix your year groups when you can't even mix classes within a year group in the way that schools normally would I think it can lead to isolation and disconnection so over the last couple of years have been at times quite disconnected from the rest of the school say um, it feels really good to know that there's this kind of openness about conversation and talking that year 12 themselves got an awful lot out of it in terms of their well-being and understanding themselves as well as um, enabling others. I think now year seven know that, you know, they're safe, you know, kind people who care, who want to enable them to settle in and care about them. And I don't think that wasn't there. I, don't, I mean, we've got amazing pupils here. I don't think it's ever the case that that hasn't been there, but I think it's, you know, really visible for year seven. And that sense, for me, that sense of connection um, and that idea that it's good to talk and that that's normal and just having a 15 minute walk and talk doesn't mean you're desperately struggling or there's something really wrong. Just, just a great thing to do for your well-being and to kind of make sure that you you feel settled and, and safe and secure and happy. I love what you just said there, that you that to talk and to connect is, is part of our well-being. And I think it's so easy to focus on the deficit and issues and, you know, what's going wrong then how do we make things go right and what do yeah. we need to create to make things go right for children and young people on a sort of regular basis and that's basically what you're doing so any final thoughts or things you'd like to say just a massive thank you to to all the young people that have been involved um the year sevens who have just so bravely and happily said yeah cool i'll give it a go you know and made this work because they've been willing to do something that they might have thought oh, oh I don't know actually that could sound a little bit kind of oh I'm not sure and they've done it and that's amazing and because of that bravery and because they've been willing to say yeah okay yeah yeah I'll give it a go then I think a lot of their peers have seen that and gone okay yeah no me too I want to do it too um and then just my year 12 and 13 um mentors who are just incredible the amount they've done the the amount they care really care the emails I get the conversations saying well I'm a bit worried about so and so, um, is there anything more I can do to help? Or, you know, I've got capacity to mentor too. Can I take another one? Or, yeah, I'll keep going. Or, you know, what else can we do? Um, a genuine, genuine want to help um, other parts of the school community. And I just think coming off the two years that they've just had, um, their first instinct being to, you know, help others um, is just incredible. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're just the best. Um, what would you say to another school that's maybe interested in working with Worth It and doing the programme? 
Oh, I just say absolutely go for it. The the resources work so well. They are so supportive. Um, um, if there's any worries about, oh, how would I fill a day or what would I do? It just walks and talks you through it all. And then you can, you know, create what you want through that. But it's um, it's such a well-supported day of training. Um, so definitely just, you know, go for it. So interactive. And I think um, in terms of kind of what the mentors get out of the training as well. Like we were doing it together and it was really lovely. Um, so go for it, go for it, go for it. It's brilliant.